Hey everybody, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. For today's project, I'm working on a really old piece of furniture. Now, I know this to be Victorian, and we do get an awful lot of this style of furniture in the UK. And over the years of painting furniture, whenever I've painted over something as old as this, occasionally I get some negativity regarding why would you put paint over the piece of furniture. So if you're one of those people that feel that way about painting furniture, try and stick around if you can bear to watch what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna explain my reasoning around painting over something quite so old, and my reasoning for the style that I'm gonna put it into. Um, I am gonna pay homage to its background and be really gentle with the piece of furniture um, and hopefully you will like the outcome. It will suit many different tastes. So let's take a closer look at the piece of furniture. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this piece of furniture. So as you see from the top down, you will see there's lots of patina of this piece of furniture's life. It's had things spilt on there and things left, cut marks, whatever. It's had quite a severe amount of patina created by that. Now, that's never bothered me. I lived with this piece of furniture for 15 years and loved it as it was. It was a lovely piece of furniture to live with. It's a great shape. It's probably a cottage piece because it's quite small. Um, but as you can see here, it's had quite a crude fix at some point. Somebody's put some nails through here and bad filler. It's also got some added pieces of wood at the back because this is now free and moving around. So it's had a few structural issues over its life. Also the drawers, let me show you one of the drawers, if I can get it in one piece. The drawer, the glue and the nails are split over time. The boards inside, as you can see, this is wobbly. So it's gonna need a bit of fixing. Now I am gonna fix in the most sympathetic way that I can for the piece of furniture. Um, obviously, the look that I go for, I promised that I would pay homage to its background. Now, it is gonna be covered with paint, and yes, the age old pattern will go, because if somebody chooses to strip this back at a later date, that will vanish when the paint's remo removed. And that is truly sad, because it, it's done well, it's an old girl, and it's done really well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it in a black color. Now, the Victorians loved ebonized furniture, so we're gonna go for a more contemporary feel to this in by using black as like ebonizing it almost. So um, yes, we're gonna lose some of its patina and I'm not, normally I'm usually adding patina to my pieces in a painterly way, um, but I'm gonna keep this very flat and we're gonna add some contemporary twists to it along the way just to try and modernize it really and make it appeal to more people. I have to say, I've tried to sell this piece of furniture on my local marketplace for 15 pounds and nobody has taken me up on it and not even furniture painters i thought a furniture painter would snap it up because i didn't have the heart because i've lived with it i've got a personal relationship with it i didn't have the heart to paint it until now so um it's gonna get that makeover and it may still stay with us because the overall look i want to be able to make this piece of furniture sit really well with other beautiful pieces of furniture wood as well as painted and hopefully it will sit really well in a, an, a Victorian style setting, but also in a modern house. So I'm hoping that the paint will preserve it for another hundred years and people will love it just as much. So this is the underside of the table and as you can see if I pull this up down you will see that that's why somebody stuck the nails and bad filler on the top. 
So what I'm going to do is these blocks are solid underneath and I think these have been added to that fix at some point as well. They're the original ones either end but they've split so I'm not going to focus on them. The new ones that whoever added before I'm going to put some glue behind and I'm going to use some tacks or nails just to secure in place while the glue goes off which should allow this tabletop to be much more secure. So that's the first fix. Other than that, structurally this piece is quite strong. So we're going to start with that first um, and hopefully that will make everything sturdy again. The glue that I'm using is Tight Bond Quick and Thick. I really like this product. It does what it says on the container. It is very quick. Also, you can see me here using the little nails just on an angle, just to secure the whole thing into place. So this is the drawer that is really badly damaged, as you can see here, nails. Um, and we're gonna tackle putting this back together so it's got strength again. There is three panels of wood that slot into this groove. Um, this end panel, and originally this would have been as one piece of, of board. So it would have just slided in and it would have been tacked to the end, which is still tacked at this end. So I'm gonna slowly start carefully just wiggling around a screwdriver just to loosen those tacks. I kind of want to rebuild the drawer and add glue and slide it all back together and glue these together. I don't mind the cracks being across it. We're gonna probably do some interesting inside. But first up, let's just kind of dismantle what we need to um, to take out. Let's see if we've got, kind of get this up und underneath there. I'm just being very gentle. This is very thin wood. So I'm just going to take my time. And there is another split at this end, so.
Whilst I wait for the drawer to set up, I'm gonna turn my attentions to the prep work on the main body of the piece of furniture. I've decided that I'm gonna be using Annie Sloan satin paint, which will need a light key. I'm gonna go with the color Athenian black. I think this will really work well for that kind of style of ebonized furniture. Also, what I'm intending to do is not sand away every single scratch. I'm gonna leave some of the deeper bruises and scratches that this piece of furniture has had in its life. I'm hoping that they will catch the light when you see the painted finish and it will allude to being quite old or modern, who knows. Um, what I would say is always use a mask when sanding. Be very careful of removing old finishes without a mask. Ventilate your space. I'm in the coach house, so there's big doors to my left. Um, I'm gonna use the mouth sander on top and go in with a hand sand around all of those curvy legs, just to remove a little bit of that varnish ready to receive the paint. The glue has now gone off on the drawer, so I'm gonna release it from its clamps and let's see how that looks. That sounds good. Um, nice and firm, the drawer is back together. And what I'm gonna do with these, unfortunately, as much as I really love these handles, I'm gonna remove them because I've got a plan for the overall piece, which these handles probably won't fit in. I'm going for that contemporary look meets the um, traditional look, which these handles are loose anyway. Let me see if we can get them out. One of them's on a screw. I think it's had some replacements. This one's totally different color to that one, and it's a different end. So I've got a little bit more work to do on both of these drawers before. That one's up. Yeah, they wasn't very secure. This one has got a screw in it, so I need a screwdriver. Let's take a screwdriver to take this one out. Every one of these handles has had a different way of being attached. So, um, again, it alludes to me that these drawers are, handles are all very different. There we go. So there you go. I will keep these um, handles for another project. And what we're going to do is fill these drawers and sand them again so they're smooth so we can make, at the end, we can make another decision whether these go back on or one of them goes back on or completely different. Just to make light work of the filling, I'm using a pine coloured two pack filler. This means there is the filler and a separate hardener which you mix together and the filler hardens pretty quick so you can move straight on into your sanding. Before I start painting, I'm going to clean the whole surface area of the piece of furniture. This will remove any of the dust from sanding and if there's any greasy residue left over from waxes or other polishes over the years, it's wise to use a grind cutter and you should be good for your paint surface.
As you can see, I'm using Annie Sloan Satin Paint in Athenian Black. I'm just applying it lengthways with a small synthetic brush. The whole project probably will need two coats, but the paint is self-leveling. It will really look fantastic once you've completed that second coat. Also, a little tip for you, when you're applying your satin paint around the drawer apertures, keep those coats really thin and make sure that you don't have any buildup in the connections of the drawer aperture because you will get problems when reapplying your drawers later. So remember, two thin coats is better than one really heavy coat. Just to speed up the whole viewing process of this tutorial, I did give the whole piece of furniture another coat of satin paint. Two was just enough, and this is me completing the top section of the console. Okay guys, I'm now on day two of my paint project. Now, I did leave the paint overnight to slightly cure. Annie Sloan satin paint will dry in 30 minutes. It'll be touch dry. I have painted the sides of the drawers. I would say be very mindful of the traction of the drawers when you're placing them back into your project because it will take another 20 to 30 days to fully cure and harden. So be very mindful of that. There is something that you can do with that that I will explain later on in the project. But now let's turn our attentions to the drawer fronts. Now, I promised that I would try and kind of give this a contemporary feel, but still kind of looking back in time to a period of Victoriana. So what I'm gonna do is add some decoupage to the drawers. Now, I've got a few options that I've been pondering over, all different brands. I'm gonna show you some of them. Now, I have got this paper from Posh Chuck Deluxe decoupage papers. Unfortunately, had it been in the A1 size, I probably would have gone with this one. As you can see, it's got a wonderful black background and it kind of gives you that feeling of Victorian style imagery. So I think it would work really well on this piece. Um, the other one that I'm probably gonna use on the drawer fronts, now this is a full A1 size. This is a mint by Michelle and I absolutely adore this image. So I think I'm gonna use this on the drawer front. Now, you might think, wow, that's a lot of paper. And initially, you would think, right, I'm gonna use the whole image over the top surface. And of course, you can do that. 
It is a large sheet of paper, but I'm only gonna use a couple of small sections out of this, which will inflate the pattern size on the drawer fronts, which I think will be really contemporary. Of course, I will save any bits of paper that I'm not gonna use. It will come in handy for a similar project like this. I just think it will give it that real contemporary edge. Inside, I'm going to use a different decoupage paper. One, I haven't made the decision, one of these two. These are Annie Sloan decoupage papers. And as you can see, again, black background, very Victorian. Um, these are RHS um, images. I think I might go for the butterflies on the inside for the drill liners. Just keeping it all sort of the same tones and some, that surprise and delight that you'll find inside the drawers. And then we're gonna look at hardware later. So I'm gonna start prepping for the um, decoupage papers. I am gonna use a white background. I'm gonna paint it out with chalk paint just for speed. Um, all of these papers, I think they really do work much better with a white background. The colors come more true to the papers. You could go over with a dark, uh, you could paint something slightly darker underneath and it will alter the colour on the top surface of the decoupage paper. So let's put a white coat on all of the areas that we need for decoupage and then we'll start the application. As I apply my white base coat to receive my decoupage paper a little later on, you may notice that I've not gone right up to the edges of the sides of the drawers. This is because I don't want any of the white paint to poke out around the edge of the decoupage and there is Athenian black already underneath. So the two dark colors should interconnect really well once the paper has been applied. Now I'm going to prepare all of my decoupage paper for the project. Um, the internal, the drawer liners, I'm going to cut them absolutely perfect to the aperture of the drawer opening. And how I'm going to do that is I've got a, a large set square so I can measure the exact measurements and cut it prior to going into that opening, which I'm getting 70 and 80, so that's nice and easy. So let's prepare the first paper, which is, I've decided to go with the butterflies, the Annie Sloan. You get two sheets in here, which is great, which is great for a project like this. You could use this on the outside and on the inside. But I'm obviously going with different patterns. Pop that over there, let's open this up. Yeah, this is lovely. And I really do think it'll work with the Mint by Michelle. Let's see how much paper we get. Yeah, there's gonna be just enough. So what I can do, we'll start with this, this one first. We'll start on the underside, smooth it all out. Now this will have a square edge to it, so I know that I can work straight from that square edge as I did measure the drawer. And what did we say? We said 70, 80. So I'm gonna make a little mark on the paper. 70. And we have that there, and 80. Make sure it's all lined up. 80. Oops. And then what we can do is flip this ooh, all over the place, flip it around on each mark. Line it up, 70 and 80, 70, and A2 again, and I can make my cut line. I've already measured the other drawer, because um, sometimes on old furniture, they can be different sizes, so don't get caught out. I've measured it already, and it's exactly the same. Um, the Victorians did build furniture really well. We'll do the same again 
on this sheet. Okay, note to myself. Don't be so sure you know your correct measurements. I was just about to cut and then I thought this looks slightly big. So I went back with my measurer and realized I'd added 10 centimeters on. So measure twice, cut once. I went back and remeasured and then went back in with the scissors and cut out the perfect size of paper ready to be placed in my drawer bottom. Right, application on Annie's decoupage paper, I would advise probably using Annie Sloan's decoupage medium. It's the right consistency. I'm out of stock on that, unfortunately. So I'm using um, PVA. I suppose this is very similar to like Elms Craft Glue, if you're elsewhere, or Mod Podge. It's got a thicker consistency. Um, I probably wouldn't go with Posh Chalk Infuser. It's slightly um, runnier and the paper is quite absorbent. The same with Mint by Michelle, I would say definitely use the same kind of glue, the thicker glue, um, it seems to work much better. So I'm gonna apply a layer of um, the craft glue all over and I'm gonna do this in one fell swoop. It's not um, the easiest to um, throw one paper down, it's lining up. You need to get it lined up almost perfectly. So it's one of those things guys, wish me luck. Um, I love decoupage, but it's always quite scary when applying these papers. So um, it's exactly as you imagine. It's like wallpapering. So I'm giving a fairly generous amount over the white paint. The open time on this glue is a little bit longer, so that's why I'm suggesting using this type of glue for this paper. Going right up to the edges. It will dry clear, so if you make any mishaps around the edges, that's fine. It's all spread around. Nice even coat. That's the one. And then we're going to line it up at the top. Kind of dropping in. Right, just go for it. This is the way to do it. Just go for it. Don't be frightened of it. I suppose we all get a little bit frightened of these things. Even I. And I need to lift this end up. Once you get it lined up, it should go down a lot easier. Right, I'm gonna pick up a dry brush and go from the centre and work out. Straight around the centre and push out. You do get a little bit of um, wriggle room with the paper. You can kind of manipulate it a little bit. Now these rolls are old, so you will see little lumps and bumps through this. I don't mind, that's, that's 
fine. I want this to kind of keep its character and age. One last lift up this side and we should be good. The paper will stretch slightly. And don't worry about any lumps or bumps in this. As the paper dries back out, it should stretch back out. So some of those lumps and bumps will vanish. Clean up the edges. Now I'm going to address the draw fronts and the decoupage and what pattern that I'm going to place on the front. So I really, like I said, I want this pattern to be really bold and obviously we're using a large paper on a small surface area. But to me, it is really key what you choose in that pattern. So I've had this opened out and I'm looking at the things that I really love within the pattern. Now there's a couple of areas that I really want to feature. now. This area of Little Narcissi, I think is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think this is an auriculum here, and I really like that. I think these are really lovely parts of the paper. I've looked at it both ways round. One thing that I do want to stay away from is probably too much of the white. These really bright whites, I want to keep some of the dark areas. So some of the really darkness, like in here, and probably here, I like this darkness, I love that area. So I've got my drawer front and I'm kind of placing in areas where I think I might choose. So I'm looking at what is gonna be the overall pattern. So I'm thinking over the two drawers, I am going to go with an area that probably goes across. I love this and I love that. Maybe starting from here, going across to this, flower I think that's really nice and on this side maybe a little bit more the other way keeping this flower and going across to this rose keeping all of this area in um, I haven't quite yet decided I'm just gonna have a little play around what you could do at this stage is take the aperture of your drawer um, and cut out a piece of cardboard and cut it to the actual size and then you can place it over and work out what looks really good. So that's one way of doing it. But you guys, you know me very well, risk it for a biscuit. I'm just gonna go for it and choose the areas that I really like. application of mint by michelle i'm gonna take you through this the best that i can in the way that i like to apply this type of paper now i've put my drawers back into the cabinet so i know which drawer sits which side i think that's quite important and then i've laid my papers back on top to see which way the pattern lies and how i want that to look and i'm really happy with the way this looks obviously i'm wrapping the paper around the edges of the drawer front. Now I want a really clean connection. 
So um, I'm going to treat the um, top and the bottom slightly different to the sides. Now how I'm going to tackle the sides is I'm actually going to use some painter's tape um, on the edges because this is a chunged and grooved um, drawer and I want the connection to be neat all the way around as it is on the top. So I'm going to use some painter's tape to mask off the area that I don't want glue and the paper to be. And I will use this as a score line afterwards to um, remove any paper that I don't want. And obviously the glue will not stick to that area. So that's what I'm gonna do on the sides. Um, I will show you how I'm gonna tackle the top and the bottom a little later. Let's work on this drawer first. That goes on there. Oop, get it level with the edge of the drawer, that's perfect. That's lovely. We'll move this drawer out of the way at the moment. Now, Mim by Michelle, there's so many ways of um, applying this paper. It's kind of a little bit waxy, this paper. Um, and you can use water, which I will do. But my, the way that I like to apply this is to I do this all of the time with Mint by Michelle, is to literally break down the paper by creasing it as much as you can and then smoothing back out. This will add sort of, it won't, you, the creases won't be seen, but it will add some sort of stretch to the paper. I know that sounds strange, I don't know how to explain that, but this is what I like to do. Um, make sure I'm getting it the right way up, that's the way I want it to be. So smooth your paper out as best you can. And all I'm gonna do is work across the um, drawer front and then down the sides, each side. I'm not gonna worry about the top and the bottom just yet. So we're gonna apply some glue to that surface. Um, I'm probably not gonna apply the glue to top and bottom. I'm gonna try and stay away from that. but I will go up to the painter's tape. Make sure you cover all of the surface area. Little stray hair, take that out. And then I'm going to spritz the back of this paper. So I'm going to use my atomizer. Again, this will soften that paper a little bit more. You'll get a bit more stretch in it. And then we're going to lay it down exactly where we want it to be on that front surface. So you've got a little bit more stretch and play with this now. There we go. That looks really nice. And then I can use my hand just to smooth that out. And then I'm gonna go in with a soft brush just to smooth it over the surface. That is lovely. Straight down over that connection. And then we can address the corners and how we go around the other side. So I'm going back in with my glue on the upper edge, right into all the crevices. And I'm going to do a hospital corner, um, how you would do your bed sheets on this. If your drawer's tight, you um, might, might not want to do it this way because it will catch. So any bulk that you create will catch. I know that these drawers are pretty good, so I'm just going to allow it to be a hospital corner. So I'm gonna go in on that side, pushing the side down smooth, and then allow it to fold on an angle here. So I will need to put more glue underneath that area so that will stick, just like so. 
pulling this nice and tight so it wraps really well around that corner. Same thing again here, I'm coming up and over, pulling it to a corner, gives you a nice mitered, mitered edge, which I can then pop some more glue just underneath. And then we will address taking off that excess a little later. So I'm super happy with the way it looks on the drawer front. There is some finer creases that are still gonna iron out over time. This is still wet underneath. Once the glue dries, the paper should, as the Annie Sloan did, it should just flatten. I did create a little anomaly on this corner. I've kind of ripped the paper on the corner. I did also on the other drawer, but that was because I was lifting it and I put my thumb through it. Have to remember, wet paper does rip. Um, what I'm gonna do with this corner is what I would call fudging it in. Now, I'm gonna fudge it in with a little bit of graphite. I'm just gonna dot some graphite on this corner, hide those white areas. Of course, all of the papers are paintable um, and I probably will use wax at the end anyway. So I'm just gonna take away those little uh, white anomalies. There's one or two around the edges where it hits the sharp edge. So I'm not too worried and there's a couple little dots on the front surface. I don't know what that's from. I don't know if it's the printing error or I've picked up white paint, but not to worry, just fudge it in with a little bit of paint. And once it's finished on the top surface, you should never see those little areas. A little bit there and that's it. Now you're gonna need to leave these to dry for quite a while because um, Mint by Michelle, I, I would say it, dry, it takes longer to dry than any of the other papers. So leave it to dry, keep on going back, making sure that you've pressed down any air bubbles. There's another little area that it could be glue, but never mind. You can go back afterwards when it's full, fully dried, but fudge it back in. And then we're gonna probably take a blade to the edge of this. You can sand away, I'm not quite sure, whichever, um, will work better for me on this. Most definitely on the connection here, um, I am going to use a blade straight across there where the um, painter's tape is to get a nice, neat connection. Mint decoupage papers do not require a finishing coat. I always usually go with a wax coat over the top if I'm using chalk paint, but in this case, I've decided to go with a spray lacquer for a high sheen.
So there's just one more choice to make with this project and that is the hardware that goes on it. Now, I, of course, I could put the originals back on. Um, they are still really beautiful and they do work with it, but I'm kind of wanting to bring this into a more contemporary realm. So I'm gonna go with a brass handle. Now, what I've decided to do with this brass handle is marry it up as near as I can to the size and kind of the profile of the original handle because I do plan on putting one at each end as it was originally on both drawers. So I'm gonna map out where these handles are gonna go and re-drill the holes ready to receive this handle. So that's just about all from today's tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed joining me on the journey. Just one final tip, I am using some Posh Chuck extending wax just around the edges of the drawers. This should help with the traction on the new paint once the drawers go back into place. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, if you're new here and have enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell for future projects.